Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap. With GhostBed, you don't need to worry about that. At GhostBed, you'll find made-in-the-USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25-year warranties. Plus, take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 30% off mattresses, plus two free pillows or 40% off ghost bed bundles with a mattress and adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com slash LEWIS for a limited time. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? I didn't think so. But the good news for you is that's exactly what the folks at Chime do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on the average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash Lewis. That's Chime.com slash Lewis. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank N.A. pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime Checking Account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply, except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any Allpoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. This could could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says... Uh, I think it would be fun if I dressed up as a real chicken for Halloween. But what do I know? I'm just a rubber chicken. Well, that is one of the most crazy things that has ever come out of your beak. You're going to dress up. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'll try it. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe it'd be fun if everybody dressed up as a rubber chicken. I think that would be a step forward. But kids don't really listen to me. Well, we'll talk about that. What am I prattling on for? Okay, dress up with whatever you want to because I, I've got to get on with episode 103 entitled Candy Corn Still Sucks. Okay? I don't care how many years have passed. They've done nothing with that recipe. They've done nothing at all, which proves my point that all of the candy corn that was ever made was made in 1911. Okay? Because if they gave you two shits about us, they would come up with something that tasted better. And it certainly wouldn't be Thanksgiving candy corn, which is just around the corner. Yes, it is. As soon as they finish it up, as soon as we go through Halloween, I can guarantee there will be, it'll, it's cock a doodle doo every, every fucking where. If that's the sound of a turkey, I can't even fucking remember. It is it, because everything has become mixed up. I'm working with a rubber chicken. Who knows if that's what a turkey sound is? I don't know. I certainly, somebody told me last night that a, uh, God, I can't even remember. Somebody actually told me the sound of a, uh, of, um, of a, uh, of, 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 of a, <laughs> of a peacock. And uh, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it's too bad. The memory still has not kicked back into shape, and I find myself on stage at times searching for things. Um, but I think this has been uh, just a, a, a long haul for me, and uh, we are coming to the end of it. We have been on the road since about September 15th, and here we are in uh, in downtown Bellingham uh, at the theater there, the uh, this is the last night and, um, of this run, and then I will head out to Chicago tomorrow, and that is where we will be doing uh, a, a benefit for the Kurt Vonnegut Museum and Library, for those of you who are there. Uh, I, it'll be Wednesday. You probably won't get this in time, but uh, just know that when you're listening to this, that's what I'll probably be up to. We'll be trying to raise money for that really uh, terrific institution. And um, it has been uh, some... Some uh, some 10, 10, 12 days or something have just passed. I can't even, uh, you know, I, I can't remember. I can't count the days I should have before I came 
here to talk to you, but, but uh, uh, where are we at? We're at um, October 23rd, so that's almost two weeks uh, since my mom passed away. And I will probably talk about this uh, from time to time because uh, I think it's in, 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 and for first off, let me just thank everyone for the uh, incredible outpouring uh, in, 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 in her memory. Um, I, it meant a great deal to me, um, and, uh, and I don't think she's gone very far because she, she, I don't think she really wanted to leave. So uh, when you get to be that age, you, you know, you're thinking, you know, screw it. Why don't we do another run? Um, but she, uh, she uh, certainly, uh, um, I, I think, would be uh, deeply heartened by it. I tried to explain to her from time to time the, the kind of uh, the outpouring that would occur when I would uh, send a photo of her and a quote. Um, but uh, this was uh, really uh, meant a lot to me and uh, was a, a big help during this time. Uh, it's. People have talked about the fact, I mean, it is always tough. I'm now an orphan. Um, I don't see it as that. I see it as I'm the end of a really great line um, and uh, that I think should have uh, kept going. And uh, really, uh, I'll probably be talking about that. Not, not to you, but to my psychiatrist. Yes, sir, Bob, that's what I'll be doing there. Uh, but I, I think that it's... Uh, there's a really a big difference between losing a parent if you're like in your 30s, 40s, 50s, even your early 60s, and if you uh, lose a parent when you're 74. Um, that's uh, when you've c come that far, when you're kind of almost, when you, well, when you are, uh, whether, uh, whether my mother <laughs> wanted it that way or not, when you've reached that point where really we're going to do the the mother and the son thing, the father and the son thing, because he lived to 101. There just comes that point you're too old, you think, to be playing, playing that, you know, to be playing that out. But we did. And um, but there's a real difference in terms of that type of loss. Uh, I, I think it's a different kind of a thing. I, I um, it's you you because you go through a grieving uh, in terms of the fact that you have lost that parent um, already in, in many, many ways. Um, and, and, it, and it was incredible that my mother really ran that, that to about 102. But for about two years, I'd been grieving and, and, every, and even for longer, thinking that every phone call would be, this, this would be the phone call. So it was the first time when the phone call, when that phone call finally came, it was that I, uh, I actually... Uh, knew it was coming and was prepared for it. Um, but it has been uh, on top of just keeping working. And how could you keep doing that, Lewis? Because that's, uh, it, it, it would make no sense to go back at this point. Um, I couldn't get back in time. She was, uh, she really drifted off. Uh, and I hope, I hope you don't find it. If this is too personal, you, you, I, I, I apologize. But uh, I don't know what else to talk about, really. Uh, it seems to be as important, um, you know, ex except the uh, the thing that if uh, what they've been saying about Donald Trump this uh, week in terms of uh, the papers that he had are true, and that if he did uh, know that he was uh, went in front of the court and and really lied, uh, and it, he knew uh, that he knew he was going to be uh, breaking the law when he. Uh, and his lawyers told him not to, not to make the statements he made. I mean, uh, I mean, at what point? It's, he he does what he does. I mean, and they say he did it. They continue to say that's what you did, and it's one thing after another. And there's no movement, and it it drives certain people crazy. It drives me nuts because I've I've watched it uh, even before he was elected president. But that's a whole other thing, and it makes. It isn't that big a deal right now, uh, because I'm uh, because I'm dealing with a kind of a, a different it, when when you lose a mother at my age, and yes, I'm going back to that now. Um, it 
it doesn't hit you as grief uh, in that old-fashioned sense of grieving. It hits you as real depression and real um, exhaustion. And you put that on top of uh, working shows. It's it's been uh, it's been tough, and I really appreciate the the energy that the audience has been bringing, and the energies that you brought to me, and all of your kind words, and all of your thoughts, and everything that you've had to say to help me keep going. I'm pretty good about keeping going, but it was really nice to have that support, and it meant a lot to me. Uh, this week we are uh, going to be doing um, the rants, I believe. Uh, from Eugene, Oregon, and uh, no, we're not. Uh, even though I'm correctly assuming that was what we should be doing, uh, my crackerjack technical staff has stepped in to say that I'm a liar, even though I'm in charge, and could it, at one point have said, that's, that's the ones I want, and they've said, no, no, no. Uh, what will they be? Portland and Seattle. It'll be Portland and Seattle. That's right, because we have said to Eugene, the hell with you. The hell with you, Eugene. Uh, maybe at some point we'll do your rants, even though you have showed up in, in really record numbers, and I wanted to honor you, but my staff said, fuck them. And uh, I've, I've fought with them on this, the home of Ken Kesey. We will be doing the Eugene Oregon rants, I promise. Uh, the ones from Portland and Seattle were absolutely spectacular. We had a really... Uh, great two days, and not to say that the ones in Eugene uh, didn't match it, but uh, we had a, a run there that was really quite good, and uh, and we want to share them with you, and I hope you enjoy them, and uh, uh, I will. I'm not sure about next week because uh, I'm, we won't really have the camera. I won't be on the bus. So I'm not sure if we'll be sending one out. We'll see. It'll be kind of a surprise, uh, depending. I'll be home for the first time. So I might want to do some things around the house, you know, a little, maybe uh, fix up, maybe do a little fixer upper stuff. That's right, you know, uh, maybe, maybe get my toilet working again. Whew, that'll be good to see. It'll be good to be home. It's always good to be with you. Uh, thanks for listening to me prattle on today because I really, uh, really didn't know how to approach this one, and uh, we approached it. We've done it. And now it's time to go back and see how my fantasy teams are doing. And I know that uh, I am uh, certainly uh, been, um, I know that things have changed because I was not as focused on my fantasy teams as I normally would be. And that's, and that's called, uh, that's called grief. That's what that is when you, you're just not able to really uh, get focused, but I will be. And, uh, I hope you all have a splendid week and, and really a tremendous, tremendous Halloween. Make sure your kids have a great Halloween because your kids have been fucked. And so make it the best Halloween they ever had. Okay, because then they're going to have to deal with Thanksgiving and your family coming and all the bullshit and nonsense that that brings. And then Christmas, um, you know, who knows? You know, you, you know, tr you know, this is this just let's start with. Halloween. Let's get that right for fucking change, okay? And uh, and 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 uh, and seriously, if you want to dress up like a uh, a rubber chicken, be my guest. Take care of each other. Take care of each other, because that's the most important thing we can do. We'll see you at episode one hundred and four, uh, which will be entitled uh, "Halloween is Over." And what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And uh, just an addendum, it isn't uh, episode uh, 103. I had told my staff specifically, all 32 of them, actually, I think I've overhired. Uh, I said, um, some of them are wearing uniforms, which I don't quite understand. And I said to them, this is episode 104. And they said, no, Lewis, it's episode 103. I was right. They said 103. I said 103 when I started. Then when I finished, they went, ha, 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 we were only kidding. It's 104. So for those of you who are actually counting, this is episode 104. I mean, you get that high in the numbers, you, you really, you, you know, things can slip. Like, um, because uh, my staff doesn't know how to count. But we'll, I'll talk to them about that now. 
I'm going to show them there's a thing you can do with your foot. And they, none of them know how to do it. It's the easiest way to count. We'll see you. Bye-bye. We all know that money can't buy happiness. God knows I've tried. But we also know that not worrying about your money comes close. That's where Chime can help you smile more. Chime was just named the number one most loved banking app. With payday up to two days early and fee-free overdrafts up to $200. They offer financial peace of mind in your wallet. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. See for yourself why Chime is so loved at Chime.com slash Lewis. That's Chime.com slash Lewis. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank North America, members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depend on payer spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See chime.com slash spot me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the United States, according to Aptopia. Look, there's a lot of stuff that I hate in this world. It's why you listen to this podcast, right? Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But I know one thing that everybody hates and that's bad sleep. Maybe you're laying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place. Or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up dripping in sweat. That's why I'm glad to partner with GhostBed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They don't just slap together mattresses like some of these companies. They actually take the time to make a high-quality made-in-the-USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve, and it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you'll want to check out the Ghost Bed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. Shipping is free, and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 30% off mattresses, plus two free pillows or get 40% off when you bundle a mattress with their adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com slash LEWIS for a limited time. We are in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here with the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall, uh, or the Schnitz, as it's affectionately called. And uh, it's really great to be back here. And um, I will go uh, right to this. It's, uh, it's interesting. We weren't, sadly, uh, unable to stay downtown this time, which uh, kind of sucked, but, but it was just tough. That we kept... Well, we were... To, we, you, know, I, I, you can't, you, you can't, you can't talk to me. They can't hear you. Okay, I gotta. This is going live throughout the world. Don't fuck it up. Okay, I know you want to tell me something. You're gonna have to wait. Uh, maybe email me or something. Send. That's why I got this fucking iPad. You can tell me whatever the fuck you want. I'll see it later. Ah, good. We're, we're moving on. I, I didn't get a chance. I, I love uh, uh, downtown Portland, and uh, it's just tough for us to stay here. We have a tour bus, and they said the, the tour bus wouldn't be safe, and that was like, oh, fuck, this is crazy. And, uh, yeah, because that's what you really want to do is hijack a tour bus. God knows. <laughs> So I'm I'm really sorry about that, and and I and I hope things get straightened out here uh, soon because I've I've talked to my friends about it. It's these are, I mean it's not just here. It's um, the the shit's hitting the fan everywhere. Uh, there's a lot of cities where the the downtown is a, a problem now. So uh, so we'll let's let's try to get on with the comedy. Fuck not. <laughs> Let's try to hear what the folks here had to say. This is from Samantha Demchak. Um, why did they tell me that I couldn't keep my fucking bottle cap? <laughs> After all, I bought two bottles and, because you were afraid the audience would throw them at you? I, you should know, have no power. None. I didn't go, make sure they keep those b bottle caps. You keep those bottle caps. I don't do that, okay? I fucking, I, okay, I don't do it. I didn't decide to come on stage later. People go, how come you didn't come on stage? Because I'm told when to fucking come on stage. I'm not in my room shooting up heroin, you idiot. Okay? 
fucking unbelievable to me. And then there was somebody who was stuck in an elevator, which I'm very sorry about. I am. But they came, so the, one of the ushers came up to my tour manager, Ben, and said, uh, someone's been uh, stuck in the elevator for 45 minutes. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> okay, well, well, I'm going you know, I'm I'm to ask Lewis to fix the elevator. <laughs> It's amazing what they think we do. Like, uh, exactly, we go, we we got to uh, get the flamethrower thing, but we've hit our flamethrower limit. <laughs> you get the flamethrower out, and you do take a flamethrower to the poor people who are stuck in the elevator. It's an interesting concept. This is from Roxanne Belts. I'm in the front two rows, and the seats that we paid extra for are fucking plastic and uncomfortable. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather sit in chunky peanut butter. <laughs> and if I'd known that and earlier, I would have gotten you the chunky peanut butter. Um, but I am not, once again, I did not buy the chairs for you to sit in, and I, it was not my idea. I would have had really comfortable, I would have had lounge chairs. I would have, Barca loungers for one and all. Uh, this is... This is from Zek, Zach, I'm sorry, Skablov, Sk or Sk Skablov. Oh, there you are. I knew you. I knew you'd answer. Because <laughs> this is really, uh, it, this is so perfect to Portland. After dealing with a roommate for two weeks that had a psychotic break, I decided to take mushrooms at your show, and it was the best idea ever. I hope it worked for you. <laughs> You're listening to my jokes going, well, there's it. <laughs> Janine Jolicoeur? Jolicoeur? Yes. Ah, I got it right. Every time I get it right, I feel like, hey! <laughs> About the fact that it's legal to snort cocaine in Portland, but illegal to use a plastic straw. <laughs> Ellie Sign, I'm from New York, and sure we have crime there, but out, out here it's different. I've lived here for th four years, and let me tell you, compared to New York, out here is fucking crazy. <laughs> not worse, not better, but the things that happen here, I just don't know where they're hatched. New York, they hold you up or do a drive-by. Here, I've heard of a guy with a gun attacking cars. Not shooting at cars, mind you, but smashing hoods with the butt end of a shotgun. <laughs> then there was the man who was naked, covered head to toe with shaving cream. Fine, but the thing was, he, he has a fully clothed friend strolling next to him, who I guess also thought nothing was wrong with it. <laughs> you are all crazy out here. John Gerbert, really? Nine months of rain and gloom? Fuck you, Portland! <laughs> That's very sweet. Very sweet, John. M. Sinclair, our neighbors complained to the city, this is really perfect, that we removed our lawn and that it was a historic lawn. <laughs> My wife is a Native American horticulturalist who planted a native landscape. Fucking morons. <laughs> Two teachers back to back. I always try to give them time because they're the ones who are really have been fucked since the uh, schools have been reopened. <laughs> this is from Kelly Andrews. I teach high school math. Kids don't particularly want to learn math to begin with. My ninth grade students had a teacher out on leave last year, and another quit mid-year, so they had subs for most of the year. So not only do I have ninth graders who don't want to learn math, I have ninth graders who had subs for a year, and learned online the year before, and the quarter before that. The last time they had a full normal year, they were in ninth grade, fifth grade. By the end of the day, it feels like I'm trying to hold 30 ping pong balls underwater. I love them, but Lord, I am so fucking exhausted. <laughs> wow, teaching math in high school, boy, I just, I, that, my, wow, I, 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 unbelievable, that's fucking, 
I would rather learn how to juggle knives. <laughs> now, just flipping knives in the air would be more fun. This is poor Shahal. <laughs> I'm a high school teacher, 14-year-old boys and their obsession with penises. <laughs> they draw them, they describe them, they mention them. Did they just discover them? <laughs> is this news, the most common graffiti on the desk? Penises. When we get a rare snowstorm, what is traced in the snow? Penises. <laughs> Mrs. Hall, Mrs. Hall, did you see what they drew? Yes. Uh huh. Isn't that crazy? No, it's not. It's just a goddamn penis. <laughs> Caitlin Easter, I can't believe this fucking state is going to go red on the, on the governor election. Voting Republican isn't going to solve the damn homelessness problem, which seems to be the only issue people are voting on. And then we have this damn Jill Stein, Ross Perot wannabe coming in and pretending she's an independent. And all that's doing is spoiling everything, so we have a Republican governor for the first time in decades. Like these white people know anything about what leads to the homelessness issue. <laughs> they don't understand shit. Not that the city council is any better bootlicking after their virtual signaling about defunding the police. Wow. Well, I am, I am really glad I don't live here. I, would, I, I really, I just can't imagine. I mean, just, I, I'd wake up every day just close to a stroke. Or I would spend every day thinking I had the stroke. I'm ending with this because it's spectacular. Uh, and because it takes us out of the realm of all this nonsense we go through. This is from Warren Looney. He's, I'm about to start interviewing divorce attorneys on the grounds of irreconcilable differences. I have repeatedly told my wife that I only use Cottonelle toilet paper. <laughs> And now I have cut myself on substandard tissue. <laughs> I immediately suspected something was wrong when I saw the roll. Where are the ridges, I asked myself. <laughs> My TP has ridges. I reached out and grabbed the roll to unwind a few sheets of fluffy softness only to find it was as stiff as cardboard. As I applied it to the intended area, my bottom was absolutely repulsed. <laughs> More acceptable items w would have been leaves, tree bark, or, 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 or dried corn cobs. <laughs> Got two references this evening for those of you who weren't here for the show. One. Um, it was fucking flamethrowers and now drying corn cobs. <laughs> and that wasn't even the worst part. There was no cohesion. So I had to repeat this horrific process over and over and over again. After the assault had taken place, I sprang up to seek out the source of this abomination that was toilet paper in name only. And there it was, in the corner, in all its hideous glory. I could hardly believe my eyes, but it actually found its way into my home. Fucking Dollar General brand! I can't thank you enough, Portland. It's a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you to everybody who's been tuning in tonight. Tomorrow we're in Seattle. And then Bellingham on Sunday. Thank you again. Take care of each other. That's what really counts. We're coming to you live tonight from the, the McCaw... Damn it. <laughs> McCaw Hall. Yeah. Because I was trying to figure out something else. It was too many thoughts. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I had two thoughts and they were chasing each other. <laughs> and we were in uh, the, the great city of Seattle. Yeah. I've, um, I've actually spent a, a, a bit of time here. I had uh, uh, the theater, the uh, contemporary theater, uh, did a production of mine a number of years ago, and uh, it was uh, 
called One Slight Hitch, and they did a terrific job with it. And the, the lack of, no, don't. No, it's a little late. It's, it's perfectly all right. Um, apparently, it had no effect on the community. Uh, but I didn't care, because there were other people living here at the time. Uh, and these are new settlers, and they hadn't gone uh, to the theater at that point. Um, no. It was, a, it was a terrific production, and it was great to actually discover that you people really live in uh, how you survive in this <laughs> fucking day after day, uh, rain, shitty, rain, rain, shitty. <laughs> if you're thinking of coming to Seattle and you wonder what time of year, there's never, never a time of year. Um, <laughs> Whatever you choose, it's gonna, you're gonna be, well, and if the sun is out, it'll be the greatest day of your life. <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was incredible uh, every day that it would rain, and then one day the sun was out, and as soon as the sun came out, you would watch the, the workers come out of their offices, and literally, it was like watching some sort of a weird science fiction movie. <laughs> But it's good to be back here, and it's always a pleasure. And um, so I'll start start with this. Um, a poor schmuck wrote this: When you spend money to go see a good comic with an unobstructed view, and a human wall sits in front of you. <laughs> yeah, if you could please send me the email for the evidence, that would be great. Uh, this is from uh, Meeker Gregg, and this, I'm just gonna read this because I'm really wondering what it'll do to his relationship. <laughs> what the hell? Women that don't appreciate sensitive men, but she sure enjoyed the front row of the show tonight. Siri, <laughs> that could be, that could be that. So, uh, this is a good, Luciana Braz, uh, comedy show security more strict than the airport on 9-11. <laughs> what time do we, are we living in? What the fuck? <laughs> Followed by Kat Klozar, if I got that right. Uh, okay, what is with idiots trying to bring guns into obviously dumb places? Like your show in Seattle tonight. <laughs> I want you to hear this, Luciana, and listen closely. Um, because when I read what you read, uh, I, I, I don't, I, not until the last uh, year, really, until things started to get weirder and weirder, did I worry about somebody because coming in with a gun, because it would be like, Really, I have no effect. You, there's, they're better targets. If you don't waste, the, don't waste the bullets. So, but um, so we were in the security line behind a total bubba in shorts, a 1776 cap, wearing socks, with his sandals, and his idiot wife has a backpack. Security guy looks at it, and his face turns white. I looked inside. She had a hand cannon gun in there. Got it? Bubba gets belligerent, but I have a carry license. Young security guy says, we have a two minute response time with the police. <laughs> Bubba says, what about an active shooter situation? <laughs> he argues with the guy while we are thinking mm, it's a security line. They are literally looking for weapons. <laughs> Obviously, it's a no-no, right? Also, what if you are the active shooter? <laughs> Even if you don't use this, please know McCaw Security kept this guy out, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. We're in a strange time, Luciana. We're in a very strange time. So you let somebody in with a gun, I say a joke, they go, that fucking joke's not funny. Bam, 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 bam. 
it could be the thing that takes them over the edge, okay? So um, if, 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 if the uh, venue thinks it's important, uh, then I, I'm, I'm fine by it. And, and every, it's worth it for the one time you find I'm, And those of you who didn't applaud, you know, God bless you. <laughs> Please, keep up the good work. <laughs> God damn it, I should have been able to, I, I should have brought my gun. <laughs> From Yo, a myth, why do old men think we want to go back to the old age and deny women abortions? Fuck, you get out of my cooch. Why are we moving backwards, not forwards, as a society? Now, the, the part of the reason I read this, besides the fact that it's one of the few that were about this topic, but the, the word cooch. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to relate a story in case you, it was one of these things where I, I'll pick some thing and go, wow, what if there's like people break out in a piss fight? God! But fuck you, I believe in abortion. No, I don't, God damn it. I'm pro-life, I'm pro-choice. Blah, 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 blah. It's a gay, so I, but I knew that I could save it with the word cooch. <laughs> and I, because I was on Conan a hundred years ago and, uh, and I was doing a thing about Martha Stewart's vagina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the standards and practices called me and said, well, I don't know about the word vagina. I said, well, that's the, that's the term. That's about as clean as you can be. It's, that's, women have them. That's the joke. She said, I said, why? What did you think? She said, well, I'd like you to use another word. And, and what word would that be? And it was the first time I ever heard this. What about cooch? <laughs> and I said to her, I said, I don't know if I want to use the word cooch. It's, it sounds like I've been there. Something I understand here, Ryan, because uh, Ryan Stevens, because I used to bartend. To the bastard that left me a $6 tip on a $237 tab. Yeah. Fuck you! Mark Janeka, Seattle region just suffered some terrible fires nearby, which resulted in the worst air quality in the world. We all know the world is drying up, thanks climate change, yet there's still fuckers who act like fucking morons with fireworks or campfires in the, wood, in the woods and start wildfires. Stop it, you idiots. And then Michael Golan Johnson, did you happen to see that before you arrived in Seattle, we had the worst fucking air quality in the world? And now we don't. Why can't you show up in Seattle more often? <laughs> I got a lot of things about people yelling about uh, cancel culture and stuff, and, uh, and apparently there's a lot of that that goes in this town. If you can't say this, you can't do that. And, and that'll, that's a fun way to live, isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it to worry about anything that comes out of your mouth that you don't even, that it's etiquette. What comes out of your mouth, what you really have to control is just the etiquette. There's certain things you don't say. You don't fucking go after minorities. There's, I can go through a list, okay? But I, I don't have time. And, but I'm gonna read something that I, I'm just interested to see the reaction. This is from Trevor Dodds. My favorite bumper sticker offends everyone. Eat, eat a queer fetus for Jesus.
Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> they will, there'll be three people who will repeat that, I think. <laughs> and they'll fuck it up. I heard this thing the other night in Lewis's show. This guy wrote this thing in Eda, Vegas, Burt, Bop, <laughs> Smells Like Shit. <laughs> no, it was like that. This is Larry Bassett. Dear Lewis, I stopped at a bar before tonight's concert in Seattle, really looking forward to it. However, as I arrive, expecting to see the Yankees-Astros game, I find it, no! What I found was the bartender mesmerized by foot volleyball. I'll repeat that, because I'd never heard it either. Foot volleyball. What the fuck? It took me 10 minutes to get their attention to change the channel. But it didn't stop there. This was some, wasn't some bullshit pickup game in Hippy Dippy Central. These were professionals. Who the fuck would pay to watch foot volleyball? When's it gonna stop? Then the announcer said they're petitioning the IOC for Olympic sports status. Holy God, if they get it, nose picking and jacking off should be next. And finally, from Greg Cabrera. Cabrera, sorry, Greg. Fuck tomatoes on cheeseburgers. <laughs> I know. When everyone pictures a cheeseburger, they pitch a pants tent thinking about a slab of beef with a slice of cheese lovingly topped with lettuce, tomato, and onion between a golden buttered bun. But in reality, a tomato is sabotage to an otherwise perfect food. <laughs> Reasons. I, see, that's what I love. This is someone who thought it the fuck out. <laughs> First of all, mass food production has rendered all the delicious flavor out of a tomato leaving them a rancid rind of red rubble, only rivaled by Satan's asshole. <laughs> no one knows how to fucking cut them right, leaving either a chewy fuck frisbee to dodge or a goddamn seed water bomb that dances all the beautiful rendered fat, cheese, and beef into a garbage of oblivion. Three. Every, every restaurant forgets to take them out when I order my burgers without them. So my cheeseburger arrives and I see that slice of tomato. It looks like it's sticking its tongue out of me and blowing a big fat raspberry in my face. God damn it! The perfect burger ingredients, Lou, is Get your pencils out. <laughs> Wagyu beef, seasoned with salt and pepper, seared to medium rare. Heavy slices of American or cheddar cheese, melted. Thick cut pepper bacon for a punch of porcine presence. <laughs> Chris iceberg lettuce and red onion for contrasting crunch and brightness. Mayo or truffle aioli for mouthfeel and richness. And no fucking tomato, because no one asked for a big wet queef to cool the action down. <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck them and the vines they grew on. That's from Greg. I can't thank you enough. It was terrific. It's a pleasure spending time with you. It's good to be back in Seattle. Take care of each other. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters, and the splendid rants they gave us. 
Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.